What's in there? What is it? Hiya peeps, hello boys and girls, how are we doing? Mind you here again. Um, just a very quick video, just to sort of give you an update of where we are. As you know, my last video finished, um, what was that? Sunday, and today is Tuesday. And uh, basically we've now finished up with the transfer box, and that's in the house, tucked away in the warm, um, all wrapped up. It won't smell because it's only got a tiny bit of oil in it. Um, so that's all done and out of the way, so that can be, uh, as I say, it's all safe, that won't get covered in grinding debris or anything like that. Um, so I thought, well, about time to start on the axle, because as I've said before in my other videos, I need to think about my sequence I'm working here and the basically the, um, the axles need to be done so that I've got something to put the chassis on when that's done. It's no good having the chassis all done and then doing this afterwards. So I need to start planning ahead now and thinking about some sort of sequence to work in. Um, it's no good having all the engine parts ready, cleaned and ready to go on if I'm not going to build the engine, which is pretty much where I am. So, um, yeah, I've stripped the axle. So I just thought I'll um, do a very, very quick video and tell you some of my findings, some of my experiences and a few little things I've learned. Right, here's my lovely clean bench, as you can see not so clean anymore and a uh, new piece of cardboard required. So this is the basically the swivels here. We've got the uh, knuckles here. And we've got the bearings in there, the upper bearings. Lower bearings don't come off so don't worry about losing them, they don't fall off. So that, that everything I say is about Puma, I don't know about earlier models. Um, and then we've got the drive coupling there for the outside. One of my bolts, they actually go onto these hubs here my bolt on here. One of my bolts actually snapped off when I was removing it. Everything on here is like a ton of thread lock. Um, with these bolts I had to kind of work them in, out, in, out, in, out. Put a little bit of heat on there as well on a couple of them. They all came out. One of them all of a sudden it just gave that sort of, you know, you get the <coughs> sound and that's it. Then it just snapped off. So I've managed to um, machine that out on the little milling machine. You've got about a six mil depth here in here. You've got about six mil depth of a 10 mil bore which is like the, the, the bolt actually shoulders into there so that gives it the positive location rather than run, run on the thread and um, so basically the thing I did was just machine that out um, to like eight and a half mil the bolt and then just managed to get a stud extractor and I snapped that bit out then I was able to clock that 10 mil bore and then I went down with an eight mil uh, well I drill it out first and then I went down with an eight mil end mil and that was enough to break the thread away and because the bolt's so hard very strong bolts. Um, it, I managed to just sort of break the thread away and then I've just run a tap down there and I've run a tap down all of them because they were, as I say, they were so full of thread lock. It was a joke. So um, so that's, that is all my bolts and everything in there. And as usual, I've got a little blue book with all my um, bolts written down in there. So the swivels, um, I wanted to check them because I've known of, I've heard of Puma one of the crack here and here. So uh, these are fine by the look of it. I will do a little crack test on them. Just a simple test. I'll put some, I'll clean them up, spray them with some brake cleaner, um, and then put some chalk on there. And if you end up with a white line, a, a wet line where the where the chalk is, you know you've got a crack because the brake cleaner will evaporate from the surface straight away, but it actually stays in the crack. So I'll give these a clean up now in the paraffin tank, but I thought I'd show you all before I get myself dirty. Um, got the diff over here. Diff looks really good. Um, other than there's this thick black coating all over these bearing um, rings and I'm not quite sure what it was. I wiped it off and I'm hoping it, I don't think I should have got a magnet on to see if it was metallic, but um, very weird. And the other thing I found was this huge great lump of silicon in the diff down. It was down in here in this bore in here. So that obviously got when they put the diff onto the axle housing, it obviously got rubbed off of the diff onto here. And then when they put the axle shaft in, it's pushed it in. So I just hope none of that ended up in the bearing because if it's the right type of or the wrong type of silicon as it were, it won't do the bearings much good at all. But the diff looks um, really, really good. There's no excessive backlash or anything. I think there's excessive backlash in the back one and I know the nose oil seal's leaking. And also the other thing I've always had from this thing from day one, I even took it back to the dealers and had them look at it or just drive it. They just said it's normal as they would. But every time I reverse, whenever I turn the steering wheel and reverse, I get a click not a clunk, a click. Really, really weird. It's always happened and I'm hoping I'm going to find out what it is. Um, then we've got the drive flanges, not the drive flanges, the spindles here, sorry. Um, these bolt onto the outside of here. These basically, um, I'm not sure, I think the spindle is the same for all models, but the actual 
means of putting the bearings in is I personally think much better um, instead of having those two nuts with the steel washer in the middle and then you tap one over and you bring one over you've got here a normal a, a stake nut as you can see there and what you do is you stake you've still got the flat here look on the spindle that you get normally and you stake you can see where this one has been staked um, and that gets staked into there little tip for you guys whenever you do it is put the nut back on the spindle um, and then that way if you should I'm just wondering what that is in there Oh, it's just grease from the there was actually grease on these splines on the end of the CV joints which is incredible back ones are dry and rusty um, but basically yeah put the, put the nut back on and then if you should drop it knock it you won't damage that thread um, you know, unless you've got thread files re, re establishing that thread would be quite difficult and it is quite fine as you can see there if the camera will focus there we are so yeah put your nut back on protect the ends of those threads um, CV joints and shafts here in amazing condition really really good condition as you'd expect 16,000 miles um, if I don't replace these I'll sell them because I think they're probably worth a few quid I don't know I've had issues with my oil seals it's quite obvious and when I spoke to Dave Ashcroft he suggested that the black oil in the front was probably the CV grease mixing with the oil and basically what I did get is in the swivel housings in here there was not a lot, but there was some, but there was only, I let it run into a, an old coffee mug and I only had probably an inch and a half, two inches in the bottom of a coffee mug from each side, which is nothing. And it was quite runny. So I can only assume it's been mixing and the oil in here was black and the grease in there was very thin. So I can only assume it's been mixing. Won't have done too much harm. Um, it's never had any real hard use. It's mainly highway use. So uh, yeah, and the CV joints, as I say, they're in immaculate condition. I've got a bag there with a cable tie around it to keep them clean, and then they get stored out of the way, out of the way of any sparks or anything like that. Can't put any of this in the house, obviously, because it stinks of gear oil. Um, actual axle itself is over here, and as you can see, I've got it on an angle. <laughs> like that, it's got it's on an angle so that the oil is running out, draining out of the uh, oil drain in the bottom there. As you can see, and then the last little bit, I'll just tip it out um, or soak it out with a cloth. But I want this as, as clean as I can get it, and then I'll wash it through with some paraffin because this is getting replaced. This diff pan here is getting replaced with a Gwyn Lewis um, diff pan, replacement diff pan. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about in that. I've, I've just come off the phone to Gwyn, and we've had a, a good chat about stuff. Uh, the parts should be on the way tomorrow. Um, I've got all the diff, all the um, sumo bars as well coming for all the steering arms. This again will be, um, I don't know if it'll get sandblasted, it'll get wire brushed and painted anyway. And we'll sort it out and it'll be lovely and glossy, as you know I like to do because I'm a bit tart with things like that. Um, on the ends here, obviously belt on flanges where the swivels went. I wanted them off, I didn't want to get any well spatter or anything on the spindles. So basically this is a pretty much now a bare casing I'm not sure if these um if these studs come out or not um, I've had a quick look at measurements this here is like six mil thick it's like 250 thou thick so quarter of an inch really really thick but this checking it here which is in its flattest portion here around the uh, let's get you the right way up here around the filler plug this is only about 90 thou thick so that's sort of I don't know it's just over two millimeters so you can imagine that down here it's going to be like one and a half millimeters so if you whack that on a rock or something on a good day it's just going to push it into your um into your crown wheel it's going to wear through and you're going to lose all your oil on a bad day it's going to hit it really hard and break a tooth off the crown wheel so i think it's worth fitting these tough right the, the, the bolt on diff guards the bolt line here are fine but in if they're constantly wet and they get mud and crap in them they will rust through down here um, so I'd rather just replace it with a, a weld on diff guard from Gwyn Lewis because I can I enjoy fabrication and stuff and also um, it increases the capacity oil as well so double whammy there but there are a few spe few specific things to the Puma like this bracket here um, and there's a few other bits and pieces I'll talk about um, there's also another couple of things I want to tell you about the Puma as well which I found out from Gwyn um, which will be quite interesting for a lot of you. So uh, there we go. Um, 
So that's pretty much that for today guys. Um, over on the shelf over here I cleared a shelf for the axle parts. So we've got over here there's the, um, this is, I don't know if it's always, but this, this thing that goes over the steering bar, that's now aluminium. I've got a little rubber cap stand there, there's the other drive couple and the other spindle. And then we've got our spring seats there, um, brake, brake dust guards, and then the actual discs themselves, a bit rusty where it's been stood outside. So um, I'll get them spun up in the lathe and just give them a, an emery off just to clean them up, give them a coat of paint, whatever. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, as far as errors, um, taking it apart, the only thing I found was, as I say, tons of thread lock, really, really tons of thread lock. The splines on the ends were, were greased here on the ends of the CV joints, so these aren't particularly worn. Although I'm going to replace them with heavy duty ones anyway because what they cost is not worth sandblasting and painting them. Um, and the other thing I found, I did a quick check before I took it all apart. I took the swivel seals away and then I used a, um, a suitcase weighing scale to do the, the leverage thing on, on the longer arm. And I found that they were both tight and this one, um, the, sorry, no, this one, the, um, the left hand one was very sort of duk, 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 very juddery and then when I looked at it I noticed, I don't know if you can see it on here that's on the, was it on this one? In the, in the light I could see it and you could see the bearing has kind of um, got a kind of pattern to it so um, so yeah that's, uh, that's not so good so I may be replacing these bearings and stuff. I think I don't think they cost a lot. So uh, we will see, and then set the set the loader properly. The sets the load is set with shims, which are in here. Don't need to show you that. There's loads of videos. Go over to Britannica Restorations. Mike will show you all that. So um, yeah, and the, the upper bearing is um, very strange little thing. Looks like it's got half its bearings missing. So um, yeah, weird looking little thing that. But anyway, I've just been uh, looking through this again and realised I forgot to show you something for the. The older guys out there will know about this, but for the lesser experienced guys, um, it's always worth remembering to, to mark stuff so you can put it back the same as it came off. Now, in some cases, like I think with the swivels, they only go on one way anyway, but I've put, if you can see, I've got two spots there, okay? And those two spots will line up with, if you can see them, there's two spots here on the axle. You can't really see them because it's painted and rusty, but and the light's not brilliant and the camera's not focusing come on camera but there are two spots there okay so they line up with those probably easy to show you on this side there's one spot big lump of grease there but there's um there's one spot there somewhere but there is one there there it is. can't see it no, there is one there <laughs> so that lines up with the one spot on the flange so I know that's the way that goes. Then we've got the actual swivel is marked as the actual spindle is marked as well with two spots there. And then we've got two spots there. And then over here on this bearing, we'll have two spots in there. You can see in there, there's two spots. So there are two spots always faces out and two spots is right. One spot is left and that's written in here. Okay, swivel bearing, I put, I put A out and then realized that they, um, they have a marking on both sides there and there. So I did the two spots. Then I've got one spot is left, two spots is right. And then you've got the swivel bearing, lower spot is out. Got there here, sorry. So on here we've got one spot, one spot. There'll be one spot here, there it is there. So, um, and the same on there, there'll be one spot. So. That's just something worth remembering. So there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, just wanted to do a quick video just to show you basically what I've been up to and what I found with the axles and stuff. Um, and I will see you all very shortly when the Gwyn Lewis stuff arrives. I'll do like a, a kind of unboxing and show you what it's all about. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all soon. Bye.